Hi, so I am this is I'm hoping this is going to be quite a brief um, presentation and it's on symbols and characters. So the um, objectives are definitions and consideration of terms. And I want to talk about uh, Lorna Crozier's facts about my father, which we'll, we will be able to look at characterizing this while we're also talking about her poem. So uh, definitions and consideration of terms. So um, I, what I first want to talk about is I think many um, beginning writers uh, may not make a clear line between real world and I'm going to say story world. So um, symbols and character, not that of course these things occur in real world and I'm using kind of quotation marks, but these are elements that are constructed in creative writing. There are things that we craft and build. So the story world is not the real world. Uh, the narrator is part of the story world, but you, the writer, isn't. So every piece of writing is composed of normally textual materials, which means um, writing, diction, um, Paragraphs, images, metaphors, symbols, those, those are our nuts and our bolts, nails that we hammer into place. So the real world, just in case, and I'm pretty sure you all know what it is, <laughs> the real world is the place we live day to day. It's, you know, here in our physical bodies. Um, it's our, you know, daily state of affairs. So much of this world, and I'm kind of waving my hands, sorry, my camera's not working. Much of this world is chaotic and mysterious. This world, the world we live in, is almost always beyond our control. Opposed to story world, which is our narrative construction the written story world, and it consists of an arrangement of materials, um, usually text, but not always. Um, sometimes it's a mixture of things, but for our purposes, we are talking about textual materials. So our story world is, if it is chaotic, it's because we construct it that way. If it's peaceful, it's because we make it that way. So I want to talk about writer, narrator, author. So um, the, the, you are all writers. You are all writers because you are learning the craft of writing. Um, so, you know, even somebody writing on a, a blog, um, somebody writing a journal, um, somebody writing an essay, um, we can refer to those people as writers. Um, a narrator is a character that we create for the story world. The narrator is the person that tells the story in literary writing. And known often um, are wrapped around point of view. Uh, point of view, think of it as um, who is standing where to watch what scene? Then you're going to locate your narrator and you're going to be able to locate point of view. Point of view or POV uh, refer refers to um, who is telling the story and how. So is your narrator omniscient? Uh, are they limited? Is it a first person I? Is it second person you? Is it third person, etc. cetera, he, she? Um, an author is someone who we normally think of as having published work and normally published work by reputable publishers and not often self-published. So um, in addition to producing, to actually writing work that has been published, um, people who write may be considered authors. 
um, if they have originated the ideas and the content of that written work that they then published. Uh, so for this reason, most authors are writers, but not all writers are considered to be authors. Normally you are an author once you have published the material. Um, so textual materials. So if we look at our writing as a composition, as a, um, a collection of text, um, it's not going to be something that we think of as precious. So basically what I'm trying to get you to do is sort of push your creative writing away from you. And remember that, um, How do I say this? Sorry, I should have prepared this. That would be easier than it is. If you're a carpenter and you build a table, um, you, you're not in all likelihood going to think that this is somehow a, a gift from heaven or a gift from the universe or something that is incredibly precious and that is um, the epitome of who you are as a person. You are just a craftsman that has made a table. Think of yourself like that. You are a craftsman who creates writing. You are a writer. Um, your hearts and your souls are not nor should they be in your story world. That is the thing that you are building and constructing. And you should be writing to create very specific effects within a reader. So I hope this is clarifying. So again, like, if you look at a table, it consists of assembled materials. It's the same as a story or a poem or a book. It is consisting of assembled materials. So treat it that way. Don't be afraid that if one leg is uneven that it needs to be reconst reconstructed, um, that it needs to be supported in a different way, that it may need to be painted, that it may not be perfect. Uh, I want to move on and look at Lorna Crozier's poem, Facts About My Father. So it is, um, and this is according to Lorna Crozier, it is an autobiographical poem. Um, and who is in it is, uh, because it's autobiographical, we want to impose Lorna Crozier, the real world poet, who, you know, uses images and details from her life and assembles these details into a poem. Um, so it's still a thing that is constructed. The Lorna Crozier that, that is in the poem should not be conflated with the real world Lorna Crozier poet outside of it. That is still a character. The narrating voice in Facts About My Father is a part of the story world of the poem. This is the voice that tells the story of the father. Um, the symbolic arc, there is an organic symbol of the father's hands. And they, this is what is used to describe the father in the poem. And this symbol also helps us understand the narrator. The symbolic arc of the hands is also a character arc for the narrator, for the poem slash daughter. So the person telling the story, regardless of the position, regardless of the point of view, the POV, the person telling the story is a narrator. The narrator describes events, places, and people and by people, I mean other characters. Everything the narrator describes always also reflects back and characterizes that narrator. So don't forget that the narrator is still a character. It 
it's uh, the narrator isn't somehow outside of the material. The narrator is embedded within it and is always a part of character development. So the narrator in Crozier's poem um, describes her father's hands as, and then I've just given you a list of quotes that um, are descriptive. Um, and you'll notice they're not um, especially flowery, especially sentimental. They're not um, necessarily beautiful. Um, you know, they're very um, almost run of the mill until they're stacked one upon the other. And that's what gives us our view. So he chews his nails to the quick. His hands and arms are huge from working hard. I wanted my arms to be as hairy and powerful as his. His brains were in his hands. His fingers knew exactly what to do. The first time he held me, his hands shaking. He caught his right hand in a lawnmower, severed the first joints of three fingers. I was standing beside him. I fainted. So she's describing this man. The narrator is describing her father. And we're seeing um, really um, tangible, real world aspects in, that are being constructed within the story world. He never came to the plays I was in, never watched my brother play hockey. He was drunk at my grade 12 graduation. I was the valedictorian, stayed out the night before and arrived home just as mom and I were leaving for the gym. He couldn't tie his shoes. Beside the principal at the head table, he fell asleep, his head nodding over the plate of ham, scalloped potatoes and jellied salad. And you'll see even here, we're not, we don't really know that much about the narrator. We don't really know very much about her. We're not getting, um, it's not, you know, I was, I was um, upset. I was sad. I was embarrassed. We're not getting that information. So um, again, characterizing the father, creating these, the character of him is if we just look through, these are really, again, almost kind of simple things you might take for granted. He's five foot eight, he has a large nose and thick gray hair. He chews his nails to the quick. He's skinny, but he didn't used to be. He won all the arm wrestling matches at the Heasley Hotel. He calls himself Irish and he's proud of it, though he's third generation Canadian. His father moving from Ontario to Saskatchewan, settling on a farm near a town called Success. He wasn't smart in school, quit in grade eight to help on the farm. His brains were in his hands. He could fix anything. His fingers knew exactly what to do. He was famous for two things in the area where he grew up. So we're seeing like really um, kind of very mundane things, but they are stacked. So we're getting a really full picture. But again, it is not sentimental. It is... Um, factual. Um, we find out that he plays the fiddle. We know he who, who he marries and she loves to dance. We know he doesn't like to swim. He doesn't even like to walk. He likes only things that are going to connect him to a machine. We find out that he purchases stolen goods in bars and then sells these stolen goods for a profit. We find out that he collects ballpoint pens that he owns pool tables and the beer parlor at the Legion, and that he, um, you know, every Saturday he is rolling his quarters in strips of brown paper at the breakfast table. And if we see characterizing the daughter, um, the narrator says, when I was a kid, he won all the arm wrestling matches at the Heasley Hotel. I wanted my arms to be as hairy and powerful as his. He wasn't there when I was born. The first time he held me, mom was mad. He was hung over his hands, shaking. He smashed his left hand between the steel doors of a freight elevator. I was standing beside him. I fainted. 
One morning out of the blue, he told me he'd rather kill me than have me marry a Catholic. He follows the lines with the one good finger on his right hand, reads everything three times. I don't know how much he understands. So again, it's um, this kind of stacking of character characterizations that create the wholeness of the picture that we're receiving of this family, um, particularly this father and this daughter. We don't have a lot of information about the daughter, but we have, I think, enough. So why is it important to separate the poet, Lorna Crozier, from the narrator, the daughter, and the poem? So much of Crozier's life is excluded from the page. The poem is the sum of materials that exist on that page. The poet has created, constructed, built this poem. Just as she has built a daughter in a poem and a father in a poem, these are characters that exist in a story world called a poem. So we can only see these details of these characters in this story world of the poem that we are given access to, that the writer allows us to see. So um, when you are working on your own writing, um, I would suggest there are five guiding questions on how you can create a symbolic arc that will characterize your narrator. So how can you create your narrator? How can you create symbols and a symbolic arc and, um, you know, build a layer upon layer upon layer? So um, here are five guiding questions for you to consider. What kinds of objects would naturally appear in the story I'm telling? So, and again, go back to Lorna Crozier's poem. What kinds of objects are naturally appearing? So we have like beer parlor, we have the legion, we have um, coins. And of course, what we really have are the father's hands that carry us through, um, the hands are a symbol that carry us through that poem. What kinds of associations might be connected with any given object? So um, how can you elaborate? How can you fill in your, um, your symbolic arc? So think of what Lorna Crozier does with the hands, how she keeps building or how she keeps building the character of her father. Always make sure that your associations are actually supporting the story that you're telling. And then also think like, how can you repeat and transform your objects, giving extra layers of potential meaning? So if we think about um, Lorna Crozier's poem, think of that ending where she's describing her father reading with like that one finger, that index finger that, that apparently functions from his hands and how he's running his finger um, underneath the line as he's reading and how he reads everything three times. And think of the end of that, that where she says, I'm not sure of how much he understands. So this, um, this becomes not only an element of, she's not sure of how much he understands of what he is reading, but she's not sure of how much he understands about like his life, their relationship, his marriage, um, his past, his past actions. So that's what I mean by like how to repeat and transform um, and give extra layers. Um, and then it, and then that fifth question is, um, how does each instance, each repetition and transformation characterize the narrator in your story? So I hope this is helpful. Um, I know it's writing isn't easy. 
and it's incredibly difficult. And um, I understand that, um, of course, you're going to be attached to it. But in order to actually benefit your craft and your writing, you want to, in essence, push yourself away from it so that you can look at it as you would look at a table. Is this solid? Is this functional? Um, does this work? Is it beautiful? Is it beautifully constructed? Can I make it better? So um, thank you very much and take care. And um, I, um, I hope this finds everybody well. Okay, bye.